Welcome back to Next Generation. The day has finally come, guys. We're doing a fireplace makeover. I <laughs> have hated the fireplace since we moved into this place, and I've been wanting to upgrade it ever since we've been living here. So, finally, that's what we're doing. Finally. It took a while for us to decide exactly what we wanted to do, the colors we wanted to use, so we've kind of procrastinated <laughs> it. Even though we wanted it done for so long, we didn't want to take on a big project and then hate the outcome. So now we feel confident enough to do it. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> so just a little backstory on our fireplace. It is made out of tile. There are lights on it that we actually have never used. <laughs> and we live in Louisiana where it's a thousand degrees every single day. So I think we've lit the fire like one time. And that was really <laughs> not even to warm up the house. It was to make s'mores. So so we never use it. So it's really just an aesthetic yeah, really feature is. in our home. So we're not really going to focus on the inside. We're really just making the outside look a lot prettier than it does now. It looks like a grandma. <laughs> And the tile just looks unfinished. This is one thing that has bothered me since we moved in. We have a lot of tile throughout the house. And this one piece, the fireplace, the tile work, just doesn't have any grout. So it looks like they just placed the tile and never grouted it. There's so, even still spacers in it. From oh my God. installed the tile. This is true. It's been bothering me, so I'm excited to fix all of the flaws. So we're first gonna start with all of our materials. Like we mentioned, the tile has no grout in it. We have never grouted anything before. We could do it if we really wanted to, but since this fireplace has been there for so long and has obviously not chipped or shifted or fallen apart, it's we obviously don't really need grout. We just want it for the look of it so it doesn't look like there's holes in between <laughs> each tile. So we're gonna be using a sanded grout caulk, which is amazing. I'm excited to use this stuff. I am too, because he wanted to grout, I wanted to caulk, so this was a perfect compromise, because you know, it's both in one. <laughs> you know how we made our decision too? Because I was all excited, you know, washing in the grout, I saw the guy do our shower, I was like, oh, I can do this, this looks really cool. Kind of fun, like an art project, right? <laughs> But then Jen was like, imagine the mess we're gonna make, because if you guys know, you have to wash grout with water. And that was it right there. I was like, I'm done. Let's use the caulk. I'm very excited for that and completely forgot about the other stuff. Also, <laughs> we're gonna be covering up our grout, so there's really no point in going the extra step and taking the extra time yeah. and money that it would take to grout it. And the caulk grout only uses one tool, whereas the other grout requires a couple of tools, so it cuts cost by a lot. Yeah, we're gonna be painting our tiles, in case you didn't guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna need a bonding type primer because you can't just put paint directly onto the tile or you're gonna wipe it right off. <laughs> and you're gonna be really aggravated that you did all that work for nothing. So we're gonna be using a primer for this. You'll need painter's tape if you wanna tape the edges, which makes life so much easier. Yes. An angled brush and a roller and tray to pour your paint in. You will also need whatever paint color you're gonna use to paint your fireplace. We don't know what color we're doing yet because we have samples and we're gonna ask you on Instagram. So make sure you're following us on there so that you can have an input because we're always showing sneak peeks and asking y'all's opinion on DIY. So follow us, here's a tag. So for some reason, our fireplace is just a flat wall. There's no mantle, there's no shelf, there's just useless lights. So we're gonna replace the lights with a mantle. So we're gonna build a box beam and we're gonna add a beautiful looking mantle to our fireplace. Yes. I think it'll be a nice addition. So what do we need for this? Oh, well this is very simple. We just need <laughs> <laughs> one by five by ones. Mm, that, that is all eight. wrong. One by six by oh, eight. Sh so you'll need two two by four by eights and three one by six by eights for this build. But this is gonna determine on the size of that's your right. fireplace. So we have one tile in the center of our lights that's a decorative tile, I would call it. And I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I want it out of this fireplace. So if you wanna replace any of your tile pieces, all you need is a replacement tile, obviously which was only 80 cents. And if you need to cut any of your tiles, then you'll need a tile cutter, which was super inexpensive at the hardware store. 
and it works okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we bought an extra tile, that's all I can say. If you need to do lots of cuts, I don't recommend this cutter, maybe a wet saw. If you need to paint the inside of your fireplace because it might be old or stained or you just want to refresh it, then you can use some high heat paint. We're not painting the inside of ours, so we're skipping this step, but if you were curious on what you would use to paint yours, it would just be a high heat paint. And the rest of our fireplace does not get hot at all. Well, first of all, we don't light our fire, so it really doesn't get hot. But if we did, we don't need to worry about the high heat paint for this. Latex paint can withstand 120 degrees in case you were interested. So okay. it'll all be safe. All right, guys, so I know it seems a little overwhelming. We've got a lot of material, but this is actually a simple DIY, especially if you don't have tile because we have to do the tile work. If we didn't have to do the tile work, it would literally just be painting and then adding the mantle and we'd be done. And if you have a mantle, it'd be even easier. Oh my God, you just have to paint. We Look just have nothing on our fireplace. <laughs> and this project is one that has a lot of prep work, but the prep work is what's gonna make it last a really long time. So it is all necessary, unfortunately. No skipping quarters here. All right, so step one, demolition. I'm pretty excited about this, honestly. I'm, Me too. I get the bank tiles off the wall. so And rip these ugly lights off. And that too. First off, I'm going to remove the lights, get those out of the way. Make sure all the tile is ready to be removed, at least the tiles that we're going to remove. Now we need to remove these tiles from behind the lights. And we need to remove that hideous decorative yes. tile that Jim doesn't like. I don't like it either, but we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Mess time. Hopefully the tiles just come off in one piece and we don't have a mess. There's always a mess. We'll see. <laughs> you nervous? Yeah, I don't even think this is gonna work without breaking this for this. <gasps> Looks like it's working. I'm glad it, my idea worked. Your idea, I came up with this idea. <laughs> All right, tile's coming out, you get you get the gist. If you're gonna do this, wear eye protection. Yeah, safety first. Eye protection, please. <laughs> so we can save the eyeballs. <laughs> We've resorted to this because it's making a mess. They already did make a mess. Oh my God, I already ended up in the kitchen. The ugliest tile is the hardest to get off. It's the ugly duck. It's like barely coming off in like little pieces. I'm gonna have to hit this thing like a million more times before this comes off. This tile is impressive. Oh, it's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. So now you have yourself a nice big mess. So we need to clean it really good before we move on because we can't work in this. Y'all, tile is flying like 20 feet across the room. Wear your safety eyewear. Yeah, so once you've cleaned your tiles off really good, we can go ahead and apply the caulking grout. I'm excited. Me too. I can't wait to see how this stuff works. I expect it to apply just like silicone or regular caulk, but we'll see. And you can get this in multiple colors. So if you are using this on finished tile, you yeah. can buy the color that you would need for your grout. Beware, because this caulk grout, sanded grout caulk, is very <laughs> liquidy compared to silicone and it will ooze everywhere so you will have yourself another nice big mess to clean up <laughs> even if you release the pressure lever on the back of the caulk gun the caulk just keeps spilling out but it was definitely worth it because it looks a hundred times better already and we haven't even applied paint yet it does look better big difference already so we know that we definitely want half of the fireplace black we're gonna be using tricorn black it's our favorite color <laughs> but the other half we want a green color, we just don't know which one. So we've got three samples here. Comment down below which is your favorite before you see which one we end up using. Should have been following us on Instagram so you could have voted. Yeah, missed out. All right, so once your caulk is dried, it's time to paint. Yes. We're going to tape all of the edges first just so that we have perfectly clean lines. It saves us a lot of time. We're not good at edging or cutting, no. whatever that's called. So this will give us perfect lines. And then we're gonna prime so that we can be ready to paint. All right, 
right, so once your primer has dried, we're gonna go ahead, add the box beam before we add our final paint, because that, to me, is just gonna tie everything together, and I don't want any dust or debris or anything on that final coat. So we're gonna hold off on that, that'll be the last step, and go watch the box beam video to learn how to build this box beam. Here we go, how to rent a hammer drill yet again, because we're drilling into brick and a regular drill did not work at all. If you have brick, concrete, masonry at all, then this is the easiest drill to add your mantle with. It's the only way, because as you can see, the regular drill bit barely even took the paint off the wall. I mean, you can see the red underneath, but that's it. Oh yeah, no crack, it worked. I'm so excited. You like that dance? <laughs> the tape really worked. When you're trying to hold the bit in place, it'll help from sliding all over the tile. Yep, it prevents any chips from breaking off too. All right, so we use the 3 16 bit, and these are quarter inch masonry screws. So now that we have our holes for our box beam, we're not going to hang it up on the fireplace because we don't want to get paint on it. <laughs> so we have our holes and it's ready to be added once we're complete. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our paint, the most exciting yes. part. Oh! <laughs> oh my God. So we're gonna go ahead, mount that mantle on the wall. Really, this will be the final step. I said that maybe three different times, but this is the, the final, final step. <laughs> wow, no more ungrouted tile. I love it. The, the color just so looks nice. even more amazing than it did in my head. It looks really good. I love the half and half, or it's not really half and half, but I love the split. I'm glad we didn't just go with all one color. The mantle breaks it up beautifully, yes. and I'm very happy. I'm really excited to just start filling up the mantle with Me stuff. Me too. I can't wait for Christmas now because oh. we can actually hang stockings. I Definitely. like that we can easily just change it up with just one color, really. Yeah. Remove the mantle, add one color, and we've got a brand new fireplace yeah. again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, Bye guys. guys.